Vaccines have been around for more than 200 years. They've saved hundreds of millions of lives, and they have the potential to control diseases. And yet... We've seen really over the last 20, 25 years, growing uh, levels of, of vaccine hesitancy around certain kinds of very well-established childhood vaccines. That's Brian. He's our future correspondent. The hesitancy he mentioned? That goes way back and is understandable in some cases. But today, misinformation campaigns are taking advantage of hesitancy and making things way worse by playing on people's reservations. And, well... Vaccine misinformation can quite literally be deadly. Vaccines are different from other medicines. We're used to getting drugs, treatments, after we get sick to alleviate our symptoms, to save us sometimes. In the case of a vaccine, you're giving that to a healthy person. Vaccines are preventative. They're meant to stop you from getting a disease that you don't have yet. So experts are asking people to take medicine when they're not sick, plus requiring certain vaccinations for certain activities. If you're pushing people on, on that, people will push back. And they have. In America, there's a long history of uh, individual choice around health. We see this in other countries as well, and that's the crux that any vaccination campaign ultimately has to really overcome. And that's true for COVID-19, it'll be true for any other disease to come. People have had worries about vaccines for centuries. Vaccines, even when they're effective, even when they're extremely safe, they can sometimes have mild side effects, not unusual to get you know, slight fever after a flu shot, for instance, or some, some soreness and pain. And they're not always recommended for people with weakened immune systems or allergies to vaccine ingredients. So it might make sense, frankly, to feel a little hesitant about that. But misinformation is exploiting that hesitancy and spreading untrue information about what vaccines are made of and how they work. From faulty science, like the often cited but debunked study linking the MMR vaccine to autism, to coordinated social media campaigns that spread confusion about the safety and effectiveness of vaccines. The groups that are behind this are, are quite savvy. You know, there have been years when these anti-vax groups have had a lot of time to organize, to get online. If they move up from one platform, they can try a different platform. They can obviously recruit in the real world as well. You know, it's, it's like a whack-a-mole game. But no matter where misinformation pops up, it's really hard to contain. There's a general sense that Vaccine advocates are really going uphill uh, in the United States now. Some people are resistant to a government-mandated vaccine, and others are concerned about the safety of vaccines and the motivations of corporations who make them. So, certain vaccination rates have dropped, and this affects people. In the case of the MMR vaccine, you saw a decrease in the uptake of that vaccine, and that actually led to outbreaks of the measles, you know, a disease that America should have well since conquered. An outbreak somehow traced to visitors to Disneyland of all places. Measles was virtually eliminated from the U.S. a decade ago. The woman in her 20s is not vaccinated. Carter Evans reports she's the latest example of a controversial trend. You can't just play defense with this, because if you do so, you're going to be doing it forever. There's no way really to counter these messages one by one. Instead, people need trustworthy information. Here's what you should remember. Vaccines aren't for everyone, but a lot of people have been using them safely for 200 years, and they have saved millions of lives. But lots of misinformation has left people with doubts about getting them. Misinformation could impact vaccination rates and infectious disease prevention around the world. The world faces a future where new pandemics, new infectious diseases will be coming at us even faster just because there are more people in the world, there's more travel, we're seeing viruses pop up faster and faster. So if we can't close that trust gap around vaccines that's widened by disinformation, widened by a general lack of trust, then we're robbing ourselves essentially of the single most important shield we can make, which is the vaccine. The good news? Our vaccines might be getting better too. 